This was, you have to recall, the time. Late 1979, uh, President Carter was actually being challenged by Teddy Kennedy from within his own party. Uh, Kennedy was, was going to make a run for the presidency himself. And the fact that Jimmy Carter could show himself to be President of the United States, dealing with a national crisis that everyone in the country cared about, and everyone in the country did, they really wanted those hostages back. And, you know, tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree became not just an anthem, People were tying, that's when they began tying yellow ribbons around the old oak trees and telephone poles and mailboxes all over the country to bring those hostages home. So the White House began giving not one press briefing a day, but two press briefings a day. And the State Department gave two press briefings a day. They loved the publicity to begin with. It was only after a month or so that they began to see that, uh, you know, this isn't working out so well. We don't know how we're going to get those hostages out. And it may be a while before we get them out. And here was ABC putting this program on, which from the very earliest days came on with America held hostage, day 9, day 10, day 30, day 40. And all of a sudden, every one of those, and then Walter Cronkite picked it up. And he started doing it on the CBS Evening News, the hostage crisis, day 48, day 110. So they hated it after the first month or two, but they helped create it during the first month when the president's people announced what they called their Rose Garden strategy. The president wasn't going to leave the White House until this thing was over. Well, it was the stupidest thing they could have done, because by announcing the Rose Garden strategy, what they had said to the hostage holders in Tehran was, you know, we're, the president ain't moving. You've got the world's attention, which was exactly what the Iranian hostage takers wanted. And furthermore, they put out the word that we're not going to do anything to endanger the lives of the hostages. Now put yourself into the, into the shoes of the hostage takers. Washington is saying, let me see if I got this straight. They're not going to do anything to endanger the lives of the hostages, so we don't have to worry about an invasion. And the president thinks about them first thing in the morning, last thing at night, and he's not going to leave the White House until this thing is over. We've got these guys nailed to the wall. I mean, this thing is the, is the best publicity we could have dreamed of. And of course it was. But here we are 20, almost 26 years later, and U.S. relations with Iran are still in the sewer, uh, which probably doesn't work to the advantage of either country. First of all, you had people like Jody Powell and Hunting Carter who were the spokespeople at the White House and the State Department, respectively, and they, they are awfully decent and intelligent men uh, who I think realized that they were in a trap of their own making because America, it turned out, was held hostage by those 52 men and women who were being held in, I mean, you know, by the people who were holding the 52 men and women in, in Tehran. Uh, it made it terribly, terribly difficult for the United States to do anything. Presidency was held hostage, and indeed, I think it can be argued that uh, it was because of this image of Jimmy Carter as an ineffectual president who wasn't able to do anything uh, to get those hostages out of there in a proactive way. And you remember there was a military operation that was referred to as Operation Blue Light, I think. Uh, where a helicopter went down in the desert and a number of American servicemen were killed. So even when the president did, did try to take action, it backfired because uh, we lost uh, a lot of uh, American servicemen over there and still didn't get the hostages out. Uh, and then, of course, the Iranians waited until quite literally the minute after the Carter presidency was over uh, and quite literally, as Ronald Reagan was being sworn in as the next president of the United States, 
is when they gave word to allow the plane with the hostages to take off.